Blitz. These guys, we've seen them throughout the course of the tournament. We've seen them for a long time playing as this same squad. They have plenty of other strategies, plenty of other ways to build their own teams. And possibly we've still got some tricks up the sleeve. We did, of course, still have this infamous Cassidy strategy, which we didn't get a chance to see yesterday because it was infinitely banned. Now, whether the team are going to ban it and make that happen again, we'll wait and see. Or we might actually finally get around to see the Giants play it. Well, take a look at the two bands already. Giants removing both Diana and Katarina, getting rid of those two AP mids, those very dive-heavy, very aggressive champions. On the flip side, two top laners removed. Both Irelia and Jax have been taken out of the pool. Shen is still there, has been a hotly contested champion in this particular tournament. We've seen him in a number of games. I don't think we've seen him banned out just yet, but he has been played uh, across the board, across multiple teams. So we'll see whether or not uh, it's going to be removed. And exactly as we said in the first game, Nunu has been removed again. So two AP medals as well as that jungler. It still allows Lee Sin to be selected. It still allows Lee Sin to be picked because he was banned out. And another top laner being banned out here from uh, the Seaman. So, you know, Jax, Aurelia, Olaf all taken from the pool. Cassidy is available. And you, you've got to be thinking now, is the secret strategy actually going to come out? Are we going to see it? And are we going to see a Cassidy first pick? I mean, that would signal doom in a solo queue rank game. It would signal doom in a lot of tournament games too. So we'll, we'll wait and see. This is him and... They are the BYOC squad. They are, they've they got this air around them at the moment where most people are considering, okay, they've, they've come to the land, they've played a bit of fun, they got through the BYOC. They're not the strongest of squads. They're not here for the top level of tournament play. Are Giants really that worried about them? But they obviously are. They are playing their Kazakhstan in strategy. They have a first pick that Exeter is going to then switch it out as the last pick. And if this is a direct counter, I really like it from the team. And Darius plays so well against melee champions. Not even just in the mid lane, near the top lane. We all know how strong he is out there. We saw Extinct play it back at Tails of the Lane in mid against Fizz uh, when they were playing up against yep. uh, West. It's not Western Wolves. Tabs hasn't been Western Wolves for a long time. Eclipse. From Eclipsia. And uh, yeah, he works very well against any melee champion. Cassidy, at the end of the day, he is a melee champion. That's how he's going to go in for his uh, creep scores, how he's going to get his CS. And if Darius is sitting there with a quick decimate, Cassidy is going to get destroyed. Yep, decimate, apprehend, just keep him in place before, you know, that millisecond before he gets off the rift walk or something similar. Leeson was available and was locked in after all the excitement of Darius. It has been swapped out to Ezreal at the last second, so maybe we'll see him being picked up or selected later on down the line. But both Nunu and Leeson were removed from the game by CLG. They knew that uh, this is what the, the, the seamen wanted to play. This is what the champions they were comfortable with, and they've at least got one of them. And once again, we see Ezreal. This is 100% of the games. He's the only champion that's featured in every single one. And I quite like this pickup if they do decide to lock in Rengar. It's two dive-heavy, aggressive champions. If Rengar can pick up kills and start a snowball, he can do well. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that great against uh, CLG yesterday, if I recall correctly. Uh, was it Acer that they were playing? Either way, we seen a Rengar yesterday. It didn't do particularly well. It just didn't manage to pick up any kills. or It didn't snowball as hard as we would have expected. So we'll have to see whether or not Giants can pull this one off against the Swedes. And of course, Lulu has been locked in as their support. So they wanted to make sure that they locked in that support and not, uh, you know, the carry's been locked in. They don't need to worry about that. They can leave that for the last pick and just make sure they get as many champions to match their strategy as is possible. They also have that beautiful combo now of Rengar stealthing, running straight in amongst the enemy team, leaping onto a squishy target, then getting wild growth by Lulu, knocking everyone up and slowing them again. We saw them try it yesterday with a bit of uh, Maokai in there. We saw them also try it with Oriana mixed in as well. There is, uh, there's obviously no chance of Oriana here. They've got the Cassidy with their mid lane instead. But if you can still pull that off, it is a still a very, very powerful combo and uh, can be used to great effect if you can actually manage to land it. But on the counter side, C6 seem to pick their mid lane. They have decided what they're going to put up against Cassidy, and it's an awesome pick. It's not going to be Darius, it's going to be Zillion. And Zillion is going to be able to just dominate that lane. Yeah. It, until levels, level 6, level 7, level 8, when a rod of edges is completed for, for uh, Exeter's Cassidy. Double time bombs, Cassidy's going to be forced back. He's not going to be able to farm. He's going to be constantly under his turret, and he doesn't do well farming under the turret. No, not at all. It's very hard to farm that, and as you said, there's a lot of champions that Zillion just beats out because of those double bomb combos in the pre-six levels. It's, it's a lot of damage, and it's unavoidable damage, and it keeps pushing the lane, and she's like, he cannot see us under the turret so well. And on top of that, they've now got this Blitzcrank for support in the bottom lane, which when it comes to grabbing people out of position, there's no one better for it. And yeah, okay, you've got Lulu to knock someone up, which you grab him in, but... If you're ready for it, if you're expecting it, which you're going to be if you're the one initiating the grab, you can try and mitigate that and dodge around it and avoid some of the knock-up and the slow. So we'll have to see what the last two picks are for Giants and whether they lock these in 
and uh, see how they decide to run their comp with. I really, really like this lock-in of both Shavana and Siva because it immediately signals to you that Giants are going to be playing aggressive, okay? Shavana, dive-heavy champion. Rengo, dive-heavy champion. Kassanen, dive-heavy champion. Siva throws on her ultimate, dive-heavy champion. Lands an auto-attack, gets that speed buff, uh, complements of her passive, is going to be able to stick to you. You've got a speed increase from Lulu that can go down as well as the wild growth, knocking everybody up, slowing the enemies. It immediately tells you, look, we want to play, we want to fight, we want to go. You look on the flip side, you've got a very defensive roster. The Dragon's Rage kick from Lee Sin. It's used to knock people away, knock them back. You've got the revive from Zillion. Keep you, you know, s bring you back to life if somebody does get jumped on and blown up. Blitzcrank is a bit more of a defensive, aggressive support in that he pulls you to his side of the map on his lane, whereas Leona would be the opposite, the aggressive. And now, of course, Zinzel, Crescent Sweep, knock everybody away, get rid of them, push them back. And you've got this... Almost mixture of aggressive and defensive champions. Both compositions slightly unusual to what we're used to seeing, but both equally great. I really like the Blitzcrank Zin combo. As you say, Blitz is going to pull it in. Zin is then going to land some auto attacks on it, apply his passive. Then as the rest of the team come to back him up, then you use the Crescent Speed. Then you knock the rest of them away, keeping him here locked in amongst your team. And you try and burst him down, whether it be with bombs, whether it be with Ezra or whatever. Then you switch on to the rest of the teams. They come back in for a second wave. That's the theory. It's never going to work quite like that. Otherwise, it would be a very, very imbalanced game. There's got to be a way to get around it. And Giants have got a couple of options with that. They've got the leaps forward. They've got the stealths if they need to. They can got the speed boost to get in there before uh, JWoww really knows what's going on and can activate their Crescent Sweep in time. So it's going to be a tough call to see from him. But ultimately, we have a Blitzcrank. Yeah. I am, uh, it's a huge playmaker. Blitz Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank in game. Blitzcrank Panky is he's wearing his skin today. <laughs> Picked that one up. Uh, what was it? Season two finals, I believe it was. Yes, it was season two finals. Ah, uh, so jealous, so jealous. Siva and Lulu in the bottom lane. Siva we don't see too often. I mean, she features every now and again. Is a great uh, uh, champion to have, especially against the Blitzcrank. Spell shield, block it away. The cooldowns are relatively the same. Of course, as long as she can keep herself at ba uh, at a distance, the power fist isn't going to land and knock her up in the air. The flip side, you adding that with a Lulu, the synergy isn't the greatest between the two of them. You know, admittedly, yeah. you can put the Glitter Lance on your enemies. It'll slow them down as long as Siva's auto-attacking. She's going to stick to them even better, you know, because she gets her movement speed increased. But it's not the strongest. I much prefer the composition of Blitzcrank and Ezreal. If they do catch either Lulu or Siva without her spell shield, they can blow either of them up. The skin war... We have to decide who's going to be getting it. Bittersweet, Lulu, Bone Claw, Shyvana. Pulsefire, Rezio, Boom Boom, Blitzcrank. Boom Boom, Blitzcrank. Yeah, you've got to, and, and Shiruma, Desert, Zillion. He's, he's very cool. He's very mystical and, and all that. So, loading up, we are into the game. This is group, uh, group A, game number two. At the same time, in the background, the Copenhagen Wolves are facing off against Fnatic in their second game of Group B. And as soon as we hear any updates about that, we will let you guys know. So, yeah, let's see how this game plays out. Beep boop. Beep boop. Beep boop. Indeed. Indeed. Beep boop. Indeed. That's, that's the way this game is going to play out. All on blitz. Beep boop. Level one. What are we looking at? We're going to see both of our teams heading out into their respective jungles. We have seen some nothing too seriously aggressive from the uh, 7 c Seamen in the last game. They did stick as a group, though. They did roam a little bit around COG jungle. Just watch to see what they could find. Then COG, obviously, late invading, really made the play towards the uh, the two-minute mark and ended up stealing away the blue buff. Once more, we do see the C6 Seamen sticking as a group, clumping up together, heading in towards their opposition's jungle. They uh, do get spotted and they decide to plant a ward in the top half of the river. So that's going to ward it and cover the top lane. Make sure Duel's safe for a little while from that Rengar coming up there at about the three, three and a half minute mark. But ultimately, they seem happy with that because they realized that the, the Giants were around there. They saw them start to back away as they invaded in. They didn't want to go too deep in case it was a trap. And they were happy with just planting one or two wards and backing away. I'm very interested to see how Samux actually builds his Rengar. Let's have a quick look at his runes and masteries, how he's running. A little bit of armor penetration there, some additional attack speed, etc. Base attack damage 76, so a good chunk of AD at the early levels. And I want to see how he decides to build it. There, I've seen a number of different builds with Rengar. Um, you know, opening Sunfire Cape, opening Brutalizer, Maybe Brutalizer Bloodthirster. Uh, uh, I've even seen AP Rengars. This particular patch, he has had his numbers uh, nerfed or dropped, so that AP Rengar is not necessarily as viable. We're probably going to see a, a, a tanky bruiser or DPS type build that we're used to seeing. But uh, it's definitely something that's going to play out. In terms of the matchup against Xin Zhao, both auto attackers, both have got forms of sustain. Xin's is a little bit more. 
you know, uh, sustain over time, whereas Rengar's is a bit more bursty sustain, if that makes sense. Uh, who would you give that lane preference to? I don't know. I don't know what to take. <laughs> you don't know if you want to. to. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. going to put myself on the spot. I think Rengar should be able to put himself in an advantage in that particular lane. The Bola Strike, uh, it's a slow, which can be a stun. His uh, uh, Battle War is going to give him a good amount of HP, and I think he's got a little bit more burst damage when you hit those Savagery attacks, especially with uh, max stacks of Ferocity. So my, my guess is there. He leaps out of the bushes, leaps over to Cotton X, really nicely done. Audacious Charge onto him, he takes a little bit more damage. He's going to be followed in. Cotton X takes one tower hit before he's forced backwards, and... That's going to slow down his jungle a little bit because of that unnecessary tower damage that he took. Exeter was already taken very low in that mid lane using the bombs from Zillion. He was only even level 1, but he still just took plenty of harassment as they keep coming in. You can see it again, another bomb under that turret. He's returning damage with best he can with the silence, but it's not quite the same. We do now have Cosmix having recalled from the top lane. Morden is taking his spot. He's hiding in this bush, level 3 with a double buff. There was only one buff on Cosmix when he was up here, his blue is still standing. But Zin knows something's up, he knows that's the kind of point we're at now. It has gone three minutes. Should be someone around this lane trying to make a play. And of course, he has this early ward, so he saw him make his way down the ramp. Yeah, he had, he, he, it's full vision. He knew that Shivana was there, was playing very defensive, uh, removing all vision that he could, and just playing safe and smart, and it was the right thing to do. Pink ward goes down. Falling Kimstrel and uh, J. Reed not take out that Mid secondary lane. bush in the middle lane. It is going to be first blood. Morden comes in there and picks up a very nice gank. The silence and the force balls from Exter, securing the self uh, first kill on the board. Yeah, Zillian a long way pushed forward. Shivana just strolled in behind him, started to down put a lot of damage just with general auto attacks and of course using that burnout to uh, keep up stay close to him and then Cassidy just walking along behind him despite the flash away from Zillion landed that very easy quick silence Ignite wasn't even kill. used Cassidy still has Ignite available so you know if he can put this the, the 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 money into some items and start to help himself out in the lane it could play into his favor down, down, in the down in the bottom lane is Jerry will straight up for the knock-up onto the Giants Blitz. There's the spell she'll be propped, and Skullnix will come across landing a long-range Q just for the final kill, but the grab goes down and better forces him to flash back under the turret to safety. All the same time, JWoww and Samux up in the top lane. JWoww is having a very good time of it, putting a lot of DPS down onto Rengar, and he's simply forced back. He's used all of his potions already, cannot survive, cannot stay in that lane. Kotnix, Kessel, and Jerry they're keeping the pressure up now in this bottom lane. One kill to one, they've evened it out, and they're going to put some damage onto this tower. As I say that, they decide to recall, so they're incorrect. They're just going to allow some of those creeps to be denied by the tower. It just puts uh, their opposition a little bit further behind, losing that experience, losing that gold, and just making them struggle all the more. Kothnik looping around towards the mid lane, coming up behind this Cassidy. So waiting for that perfect opportunity, waiting for Cassidy to come forward, he does go through for the silence, he's going to come out and try and land that Q, does not quite manage to pull it off, but there was a bomb placed on Exeter's head while they were waiting for that, does just do a little bit of damage, nothing too serious, and then he gets himself back under the turret again, but ultimately you see the amount of damage that bomb did, it's not exactly that much, it's starting to drop off a little bit, Sebastian needs to start either double bombing that or starting to get some ability power, otherwise this constant silence harassment coming from Cassidy is going to outweigh the bomb damage he's doing. Yeah, the, the, the flip side is, of course, that we're about to hit level 6, so Chrono Shift is almost available for Sebastian. X is going to be chasing and take a look at Morden. Burnout's ticking, Twin Fang, Flame Breath comes out, he's going to carry on chasing. Ignite is now down onto Morden, the Time Bomb's ticking, one more tower with the bomb and the Ignite. Is it going to be enough? Morden gets away with his life. Two to one, both kills being on Zillion in the middle lane, and just before he picked up level 6. I mean, look how close that experience bar is to picking up that Chrono Shift and the ability to revive himself after that gank. Jerry came around there trying to find that Shavano got to the corner about a second too late as the recall did complete instead. That's that. He's trying to find that low health Shavano, trying to grab himself a kill. It was not to be. We do have Kostnex now waiting here in the top lane under that top turret again. Now making his way out towards Samuel. We do see JR dashing in for the audacious charge. The knockup goes to forces the flash out. The exhaust is down. Sorry, the cripple's down through the tempest. And the Q will land him with a quick ignite and another charge from Jay. Wow. Do manage to kick up the kill onto Rengar. Even the kills drop two and two and give a slight gold lead. 
to the 7CC Seaman. The game is completely even right now. 300 gold is nothing to write home about this stage in the game. It's gone into wards and potions. It hasn't equated into any statistical advantage just yet. In terms of farm, however, there is quite a big difference in our mid laners. 42 CS for Zillion to the 28 CS of Cassidy. It is to be expected, though. The ranged ability, the fact that he can harass with those time bombs and double bomb them, etc., it is going to play into his favor. The bottom lane as well, 47 CS to 34. In the top lane, 34. It's all these small numbers. In the bottom lane, Overdrive goes forward, lands the power first. Rocket Grab is available, but Jerry decides not to use it. He's waiting for that engagement, waiting for the time, but the better losing a big chunk of HP on that trade. And if he gets caught by a rocket grab, he's going to go down. Demo charging him. Samix just for a little bit of harass. Can't quite land the knockup. He will turn back and grab it onto a, seat, onto a creep instead for the, for the gold. Blitz pressured under his turret. Let's actually have a look at the difference now between these AD carries. 54 CS on Ezreal. 39 on Sivir. So this constant harassment under the bottom turret, and of course the death involved in Sivir, has allowed them to open up a nice big gold lead. And while at the moment they're currently sitting on the same items, Ezreal does have an extra 500 in his bank at the moment, waiting for his next shop. So if it keeps going this way, that gap's going to keep stretching out, it's going to keep going in the Seaman's favour, and then eventually just become stronger and stronger and have a much better AD carry come the mid-game fights and are ready for that first dragon. The thing you do have to take into consideration, of course, on the hunt from Silver, it is going to provide a buff that's going to benefit everybody in the team. Kassadin is going to be able to juke and move around. If he runs, he doesn't need to use his Rift Walk. Rengar is going to be able to run, stick and chase. Shyvana has already got a massive movement speed increase from Burnout. And if you add on the hunt speed, uh, uh, speed increase and attack speed increase to that, it's going to be even more powerful. This middle lane, though, I've been watching it for a little bit. And Zillion was actually forced to recall and forced to back. Exter has been using those uh, Null Sphere pokes to great effect and he's keeping Zillion on low HP. It's buying him the time he needs to farm himself back up to even. He also has that blue buff now too, so it's giving him a lot of time to just spam out the damage he can to, uh, to get it down onto Zillion without any return from those bombs. Jerry did just fire a grab out to the bottom lane, but it was grabbed by the spell here to see that. Morden has found JWoww here in the top lane. He's got that red buff, he's got that burnout, so he's using the slow and the move speed buff to do a lot of damage to JWoww before he gets into that turret. And when he started out on full health, he's now down to half with just that little bit of harassment there from Morden. He doesn't want to recall it. There's a big wave of creeps here, and he's being chased back down the lane by Morden. Does use that uh, three talent strike just to scare him off with the threat of a knockup get safely into the bush under the turret, but he's going to have to sacrifice a lot of CS for it. But better is grabbed in the bottom lane. Knockup goes in. Kodnex will dash forward. Ezreal comes out. The Q's going to land. Will get activated. Blitz will activate his spell shield to block some of the damage. Kodnex has been exhausted under the turret. He's going to have to flash away to get out safely. But the Blitz is chasing it in. Cassidy's come down. The exhaust is landed. He will silence down on Kodnex. The Ignite is now ticking. Kodnex turns around for the kick just to try and get what damage that he can. Great grab into the river. Grabs extra. Now Blitz is going to try and fight too. Zillion's come to join him as well. Zillion is on Kestrel. He's not going to fall. Blitz gets knocked up and will finally drop for a double kill. On on Ezreal. Great play by the home team. Incredible coordination, landing every single one of those rocket grabs. Jerry, you can see why CLG picked them up, landing the kills or the rocket grabs when they needed to. Morden and Samrix trying to go one to one against JWoww, forcing down the tower. They picked up the first tower of the game during that entire engagement. So while uh, the 7C6 Seaman were picking up those kills and feeding their carries because it's a 3 0 1 Ezreal right now. They at least took a map objective from it, so you need to take some compensation. You need to look at what they're trading, and they're only 300 gold behind with all of those kills. Admittedly, the gold graph and the gold numbers, which you can see is what you're pointing out, a thousand difference right now. Yeah, while Cassidy is about 700 up over Zillion, Zillion's still going to be useful using that ultimate just onto their Ezreal, who is over a thousand gold ahead of uh, Silver, as you mentioned. So he's going to go back, he's going to complete himself that fate and grab himself a little bit of life still too, which when you're with a Blitzcrank, going to help with no kind of sustain on that support champion. Not so much different on Lulu, admittedly, but she does have that shield instead, so she can block the damage before it's done otherwise. Extra Modern now hiding in under the bushes around the uh, outside of this mid lane. We'll see what comes from that, because they also have Rengar down here. Rengar's going to stealth up. He's going to dash straight in. He's going to land on Sebastian under the turret. They do snare him up. Doesn't get a chance to put his ult off, and he will fall to Cassidy. For another quick kill for the Giants. And now, because they've brought Rengar all the way down here, they're going to rotate straight down towards the Dragon. 
see if they can pick up that first one of that of the game. They bring in Jaywell down. Cotton X, however, is running off in the opposite direction. And it doesn't look like Seaman really wants to contest this. No, they've got full vision of it. They know it's happening. True Shot Barrage comes across, but it's way too early, I'm afraid. And all it's going to do is end up helping the Giants members to pick up that Drake. So even though they're behind on kills right now, They've taken the map objective, they've got the first dragon of the game, they've got the first tower of the game, and you can see Lee Sin and Zinzao up in this top lane. They're going to try to shove this down and get their first tower of the matchup, freeing both of these top lane champions to start setting up for kills and for damage again, uh, uh, around the rest of the map. Rengar and Zin, they, they're made to be in combat. Both of those champions, oh, take a look at this, leaping through the grass. Cottonix gets deleted, his HP is low. Three talent strike, Crescent Sweep's gonna knock him back. Extra's low as well, Cottonix is gonna dive forward, finally going down, and Leeson removed from the battle. JY hasn't taken a poke of damage, but the amount of burst that landed onto Extra, he, got, he jumped into that fight and did not expect all of that damage from those uh, uh, Lee Sin and Zinzar combination. No, and he very nearly got caught out, unfortunately, though. Kotnik died a little bit before he managed to land the uh, second half of his cube. But Blitz is now being knocked up by Jerry. There's the silence coming out as the uh, wild growth goes on to Babetta. He's not quite going to land that next grab. Zillian was making his way across from the mid lane. If that grab had landed, Babetta would have been in all kinds of trouble. He doesn't have his flash to get away from it, but they do manage to escape to their tier 2 turret. And now Exeter and Morden are in this half of the map as well. They're at the rip off at the moment. Kestrel, Jerry, Sebastian are making their way across here. They do catch Morden in this bush. Jerry takes a lot of burst here from Exeter. They do immediately start to force Giants to back away, but it is, as I said, 4v3. The smite comes in, Morden will take that red buff away despite the bomb that was sitting on his head. As Exeter comes over, we're trying to find the rest of them. Jerry takes another quick burst of damage and the slow from Cassidy, but the rest of Giants aren't quite in a position to follow it up. And with Kotnex in the mid lane, they do have to be careful not to follow that too far. Cassidy, even though he's 20 CS behind his lane opponent, look at itemization. You've got the makings of a Catalyst, the Protector, as well as the Blasting One and Sorcerer Shoes, 67 CS to 84 CS and a Negatron Cloak. So even though there's that 20 creep score lead at the moment, it's been spent on a defensive item. It's been spent on statistics to survive, not to actually fight or to duel or to try and win out that lane. All the vision that uh, the Seamen have right now, look at that ward coverage on the minimap. It is absolutely huge. And it's just these little things that are playing into their favor, playing into their advantage. The question is, who is going to scale better once we get into these big 5v5 engagements? Uh, you know, will the Kassan and Rengar combination be able to blow Ezreal up twice if he gets the Chrono Shift? We have to wait and watch Ezra. We will now get out towards the bottom lane. The supports have decided it's time to start roaming around the map. They don't, they're not needed in that bottom lane. That turret is down. Ezra is just going to push the lane, roam around a bit. Push the lane, roam around a bit. Sivas is going to consistently push the lane to the turret, shop, wait for it to come back away, push the lane to the turret, and repeat. So the supports can go and do a little bit more elsewhere. And as a result, the better and uh, Jerry are in this mid lane at the moment. They're going to go help out Sebastian with their blue, and Exeter is going to roam towards the top side of the map with Bebeta and Morden in tow. See what comes from that, if they can do anything. I mean, of the two supports, Jiri, Blitzcrank is a little bit better roaming around because of how strong he is when it comes to ganks. Those grabs, those knockups, are going to be a little bit more useful to his team than perhaps Lulu. She's a much more defensive support when it comes to roaming around. So, uh, providing she's there when Jay reinitiates onto someone else, then she's going to be useful. But until that point, she's going to have to walk around, soak up XP, make sure she doesn't lose out too much on that front. I'd like, to see, how they, I'd like to see how they actually combine that Glitter Lance with On The Hunt from Sivir. You know, put themselves in a position where they can fight, put themselves in a position where they, they commit to an engagement, and if Glitter Lance goes across, you know, two or three members of the Swedes, then it's going to be a very, very powerful slope. Angster using that Force Pulse, getting in range. He's going to take a bomb for his trouble. Let's see how much damage it actually takes off. And at this point in time, that's not a huge amount of DPS. It is AoE, though, so it will hit multiple targets. But it's just not enough. You know, Mercury Treads and a Negatron Cloak. This is a Zillion that's playing a utility, a support Zillion. He's not trying to blow people up. He's just trying to soak some damage, be a focus get the movement speed buff or debuff onto his you know, teammates or enemies respectively, and revive whoever needs to be revived. When your Ezreal is 3-0 and zero this early on, it makes sense to build that supporting role instead. It's like, okay, I don't need to be the carry anymore. We have our fed AD. Let's just keep him going. Let's do everything we can to support and work around him and make sure he does as much damage for as long as possible in all these fights. So he can afford to then fill build a little bit more defensively. He also needed it, of course, to stay up against Cassidy in the lane. So. It will keep him farming. He has given him the CS lead despite being 0-3. And hopefully it will play out for him a little bit later on. When he does revive Ezra, of course, it's 
not going to be quite so much health because his AP is going to be a little bit lower. But Ezreal has got that early life still, providing get a couple of quick attacks off, he should get his health back quite rapidly. Yeah, and with the use of his Mystic Shot, that's also going to help him just topping up his HP. Cassidy and playing very aggressive now. This is the one thing that I love seeing about Cassidy and play. Long Sphere goes up, does a decent chunk of damage. Uh, relatively speaking, on par with that of the Time Bombs from Zillion. The difference is, that's a champion with HP, with magic resistance, etc. We're going to see whether or not Jerry can land this grab. Spell Shield is probably available for Litex. Let's see who he's going to be focusing. Rocket Grab goes out, just misses the tail of the better. A Rift Walk into Null Sphere and Force Pulse and Jerry. Chunks down 30% of his HP. Even though there's a 700 gold advantage, his teams are very, very even. It's not enough money to write home about. And uh, neither team has really made any major mistakes right now. The kills that have, have been put on the board have been created by the respective players, not necessarily on the back of a mistake from an overcommitment. We did see, as you said, a quick flurry of action down in the bottom lane as they. Uh, did make a slight mistake and they've given uh, given up a few early kills. Four now on Kazdin, three of course on Ezreal, five in total for the team. We are now looking towards the Giants that are starting to set up for this Dragon as that does respawn. We need to bring Kothnix down from the top lane. But since those mistakes, since those earlier kills we've seen, both teams have decided, yeah, okay, we can still win this, but we need to play this very, very smart. We do see the C6 team is trying to push onto the mid lane and take that down instead of the Dragon. They do not manage to do that, but Kothnex is going to keep pushing the top lane and should be able to pick up something over in that position instead. He is just going to finish it off using the creep to do that. So they do level that out. One turret for a Dragon. That is their second turret of the game. There's only one down for Giants. That is the top lane as well. But the entirety of the Seaman Force is starting to shove onto the top turret and uh, see what kind of action and mess they can make up there. Well, we'll take a look at the damage onto Jaywa. All of a sudden, we see Samus jumping forward. Crescent Sweep comes up. Chrono Shift is on Jaywa. He's taking the turret damage. Is he going to go down? Yes, that's the revive that's going to be proc. Morton's trying to get to safety. Cottonex has taken another chunk of damage. Kestrel almost landing that the uh, Mystic Shot. And Shyvana forced to flash over the wall. This has been a good engagement for the Swedes. They're going to be able to at least take the tower. Oh, a little jump of the camera. Sorry about that. Rocket grab. Pulls Samus back. He's immediately deleted. They trade one for one. Lee sent for Rengar. All the while on the bottom lane, Silver has been pushing, picking up that farm. She's picked up a tower, but the thing is, an interior tower for an outer tower and giving away a kill. You have to feel that the seven C6 Zeman are in a very good position right now. The scary thing is, the person who picked up the kill for the Giants was Cassidan. 5 1 1. Jerry lands the power first. He does get slowed from Blitzer Lance. Uses his static field, and it actually looked like it got picked up. Morden smites all that back. Smite yes, he did. Really nicely done. So he secured his buff. He, he stole it, it from the Steelers, as it were. But nevertheless, you know, a good push, towers down. Map advantage is definitely in favor of the local boys. But uh, the Spaniards, eh, they're not going down without a fight. No, Siva did decide she was uh, going to back off and stop pushing that bottom turret once they started to leave. And the Seaman did manage to save that turret simply by not being on the map. We didn't have Giants coming in to face tank that uh, mid lane turret and at tier 1 fell down very quickly, being the third turret of the game for them and leveling it out across the turret scoreboard, three to three each. We do you know, still wait to see this mid lane push coming up from Coltonex, Ezreal and a friend. There we go, Blitzcrank making his way across and they will face that one out to give themselves another thousand gold. It is still a thousand gold lead for Giants, it's nothing too huge, it can still go either way, but the longer this game goes on, the less of an impact Lee Sin's going to make, of course. He's going to start to fall off pretty rapidly. And Ezra, while yes, he did get a good start, he's not been picking up too much extra gold or too many extra kills for quite a while now. Siva starting to build a long way towards her Infinity Edge is actually now only within 400 gold of what Ezra was. So that large lead he had starting to dwindle. Yeah, and as soon as that gets converted into the likes of Infinity Edge, oh, Blitzex, take a look at that. Rocket Grab doesn't manage to catch him. It catches a creep instead. The slow, audacious charge, gonna knock him up into the air. That's a five on one or four on one gank. They pick up a very, very nice kill onto the AD carry. And could this signal the fifth tower of the game for them? No, it doesn't. They decide to back off, take the kill. They're happy with the advantage that it gave them. And we see a number of pings from Giants. They're saying defend the bottom lane, defend the bottom lane. They're setting up for a grab. If somebody gets in range and a rocket grab lands, Morden could be in trouble. He needs to be very, very careful here. Let's actually flick over to the vision. You can see clearly what's happening. Now we're going to see it. There it goes. This iron will through the walls. Going to be able to use the slow. Dragon's descent into Dragon's Rage Kick. Morden tries to get forward, but he gets kicked backwards into the tree. Audacious charge. Finally, the rocket grab gets used. Pulls them back into the bushes. And in actual fact, after all those abilities, 
he actually finished further away from his safety than he did to begin with. Yeah, halfway through the ultimate, he was transforming and flying as a dragon. The knock-up portion of j Wells three turn strike landed and cancelled him while he was right above the entirety in, of in the In conjunction scene. with Lee Sin's kickback, it knocked him a miles away. So Kassin is forced backwards. He's picking a fight with Zillion. We're going to see exactly how that one plays out. Kassin is forced to run away. The rest of the team is going to stay on this tower. Ooh, a little bit of a mouse glitch. Sorry about that one. And, uh, they take another tower of the game, and this is a, a, a game that is determined. The victor is determined by Nexus turrets. Rocket Grab goes out. I'm going to catch the tail of Kassin in this time round. And, you know, the, the first team to take down the Nexus is the victor. It doesn't matter how many kills you have. It doesn't matter how much gold you have. It depends who takes out the base. And right now, the Swedes are in that position, and they're coming back. They want more. The ward has just been cleared out, so there's no vision for them. I'll flick that over. You can't see anything just yet. Are we going to see a blind grab from Jay Reed? No, nope, he's not going to risk it. Instead, they're just going to safely recall and spend some of the money that they've accrued over this last uh, passage of play. Yeah, as we go down to the bottom lane, they realize they're not going to catch anyone else quite in that trap they had before. The uh, orders run out as well, of course, and the minions go in past without any kind of ex um, escort. Five and one on Cassidy, though. He's got himself a rod of ages complete, so he's going to start getting a tank here and a little bit more damage as things continue. He's got another blasting one. We'll see where that ends up shortly. We do have Sebastian now in the top lane, trying to farm his own jungle as he makes his way across to join Zin Xiao. But. The Giants are closing in around him. They are in this half of the map as well. There is a bomb on top of Jay Wow. He goes in, darting onto his red buff because Morden is there. The knockup has been used. Morden doesn't have ult, but he will be able to flash into the Baron pen instead. There's a ward that follows him over there from Jay Reed. Just to keep an eye on that as well as see which way Shaivana went. So the red buff is picked up and taken and kept by the 7CC Seaman. They're going to keep coming back, pushing this mid lane now as a squad. Ezreal 5 0 2 has completed his Trinity Force, but 0 3 Sivir has still completed her Infinity Edge. So while the gold lead is back to within a thousand, and uh, Ezreal has that massive lump of cash on top, if Sivir can keep auto attacking, she's going to eventually end up doing more damage. That Infinity is giving out a lot more DPS, while the Trinity Force is giving more survivability and maneuverability for Ezreal. In terms of dueling as well, it's going to be an interesting one to see how it plays out because Sivir does, of course, have that spell shield. She has a boomerang blade, that, a boomerang blade rather, that deals a good chunk of damage, arguably, you know, significantly more than that of Mystic Shock. And as long as she can use that spell shield to block, you know, a, a hard-hitting Mystic or, or ideally even the True Shot Barrage, she can actually win out that duel, throw out the ultimate, you know, use on the hunt. She does have Ignite in her back pocket, as does Ezreal. They're at the Baron Pit Ward, and they're going to carry on just slowing this game now, looking for an opening, looking for something to do. The problem that I see for Giants right now, <coughs> they're going to lose a Dragon yet, Cot Nexus started it, but the Giants, they haven't tried to create a play. They are reacting to what the Seamen are doing, and they're not creating a situation where they can, you know, uh, uh, defeat the Seamen. We do see Cot Nexus now down here at the Dragon, doing a 1v1, that big up the first one for his team. That will give them an extra thousand gold, and he does get the, the quick Ezreal True Shock Reserve just to help him out. And that does give them a now 2,000 gold lead. Giants making their way across here, of course, they've had the last two. They're looking to try and grab another one, but it's not going to be there. Morden will take down a quick ward using that Oracles and that Twin Bite. Now they realize that the Drake is gone, they need to start thinking of other ideas. Both teams happy to sit back, play this very defensive for a while, we wait for that either perfect opportunity or that perfect objective they really want to go for. There's a big wave of creeps in the top lane, and if you want to, from the Seaman point of position, you know that's going to have someone sent across there. They're going to see Cassidy arrive there soon. They can possibly use it to try and push somewhere else, whether we mid or whether we bottom. We'll have to wait and see. But they don't look ready. They look like they're still happy to farm. They look like they're still happy to shop. And they'll wait for a little bit more of an opening rather than just one wave of creeps. Kassin just has enough gold right now to pick up a Needlessy Large Rod if he is going to be working towards that Rabidon's Death Cap. You know, there's a number of opportunities or a number of options available for Kassin to build. And uh, it's one of the champions that you never really know which item path he's going to go. You know, Tear of the Goddess, I've even seen that things on the Grails. Uh, I've seen a number of different things. I feel like this is going to be a somewhat glass cannon, a, a delete everything type of build. Because it is saving up for a good while. In terms of itemization, let's have a look at the rest of the team is shaping up. Rengar, Ninja Tab by Brutalizer, as well as Sunfire Cape. No blue buff there to be pulled away, so it doesn't get uh, leashed or, or, or rocket grabbed as it were. In terms of Shyvana, Aegis of the Legion, Riddle's Lance, and Ninja Tab by as well. Infinity Edge on Silver, as you've said, and the makings of what appears to be uh, potentially Shirelia's Reverie for Lulu. You know, three GP10s ticking, KG's Lucky Pick, Hearts of Gold, as well as the uh, Philosopher's Stone. 
That could go Shirelli's Reverie. Maybe something like a Zeke's Herald would benefit the Giants team so much. Every single one of them is an auto attack champion. And are we going to see an engagement here? Extra Rift walks into Null Sphere and uh, Rift Pulse. Now we're going to see what's happening. Morden dives all the way forward at the Dragon's Descent. He's committed to this fight. Wild Growth is on JY. The HP is up. They've stopped focusing him. Will they kill him before the Chrono Shift goes down? Yes, they will. He's going to get revived. Extra is trying to fight through the exhaust. He's forced to flash and then Rift walk away to safety. The rest of the team is now sticking onto Blitz X with Sivir down. That's a major chunk of damage removed from this uh, Swedish uh, or the right roster. Now they're going to carry on chasing. The Giants are on the run. X is trying to get to safety. He jukes past that sonic wave. He's not going to catch him though. He's going to start to recall. And the rest of the local boys, they turn their attention to the towers, try to pick up tower number six. There's a creep wave pushing in here with Lee Sin, Zin Zhao, and Ezreal. It is going to get deleted very, very quickly. And they may even have enough time to put some damage onto this near the tower if they decide to group up. Yeah, they do grab that mid-tier 2 tower. That is six towers of the game now for them. They have a lot of gold for this. Like that fight, they now have just under 3,000 gold lead as well. Not quite strong enough ready to go for that Baron. It is still 4v5. And if they were to take the Baron aggro, those four remaining members of Giants still had a lot of damage. They could have turned and won that fight. So taking the tower is the safer option, a much smarter option. And will now allow the Giants to go back in and clear out the Baron themselves, take out the wards that are there, allow the uh, C6 team to go back, heal, shop, get themselves calm and collected again and come back ready for this next fight which will be over the Baron. We do see both teams dancing around here at the moment. Do you have to see oh, Morden wants to go in for that ward. Needs to be very careful with it though of course with this Bliss Crank from the wall. Or he's seen him try it once. Does want to try and steal that away. Grab whoever it is that tries to come and kill the ward. We're going to see if they keep that trap going or if they look to try and make a play somewhere else. They are heading towards the mid lane at the moment. You see Kotnik's dashing straight in onto a creep. Slow's not going to land on anyone. The Q's are going to miss, but he's got a lot of speed boost up. He does get in onto Samix. Samix though, turns around, lands the snare onto Kotnik's, and now as the team, Giants manage to back away. Huge, huge, huge movement speed buff there. He was running like a bat out of hell, trying to get in range, trying to uh, apply a slow or some form of debilitating debuff onto the enemy. It didn't work out. We just got this little standoff again, this little slow in the action. That previous engagement there from Giants, it was on the back of Extra trying to be a bit aggressive. You know, he tried to put some poke down onto Kestrel's Ezreal. Used that Rift Walk, used the Null Sphere, but no, nobody else jumped in. Nobody else jumped onto him or tried to commit to a fight. And all that signals for the Seaman is that, look, the Rift Walk's down. It's on cooldown. You've got a, a, a few seconds of window to try get in there and try make something happen. They did, and they pulled it off successfully. They're tanky enough to survive the damage that's coming out, and they've got more than enough uh, consistent, sustained damage between, you know, uh, Lee Sin, Zillian, and uh, Ezreal, of course. I think we need to see more armor coming out of some of the squishier champions here for uh, the Giants in order to, to mitigate all of the auto attacks that are coming down from the enemy. Something like a Frozen Heart would be perfect. Yeah, we do want to see another Oracle's up on Jay Reed. He's going to start walking around, clearing those wards out again as the Giants are placing them. They are cleaning the Baron pit out again, and that's where they are waiting from before. We do see Jay Wow dashing over the wall onto that blue buff and chasing Morden away. Going to give it a steal. Take it on to Kestrel, give him some more abilities. Go, not ideal, but Extra does come in against Sebastian. Sebastian's going to get left upon. Going to have to use his ult on himself to come back up. He will fall down very low in the backside of this fight. We do see everyone now converging this. Ezra is going to fly past. Morden will flash away from that grab. There's a lot of damage for the Wild Growth has been put on Blitz. He's getting a lot of auto attacks out there. Trinity Force is going on through. Kestrel's in a bad position. Still yet to find any true casualties. Samus being chased back around Kestrel. Then he's got that red buff for the slow. Extra comes in. Extra's going to try and burst onto uh, Jay Wow, but it's not going to make any drop. And there's the triple kill coming out of the team. Double kill for Ezreal. Another one for Ke um Sorry, double kill for Zin Xiao. And an extra one for Ezreal means that it will open up the Baron for the 7 CC team, and they are all very low though. They have to do this very quickly before the two remaining members of Giants do heal. Even just the two of them, Veta and Morden could come back out, and with the help of Baron, they could try and interrupt this. Baron does a lot of damage and does a lot of debuffs as far as they're concerned, but they have decided it's not worth the risk. They're just going to heal, give this up, allow the CC Seaman to get all up in the Baron's face, finish him off, grab that buff. They're going to base, they're going to shop, they're going to heal. They're going to come back out very, very strong. Keep this game well and truly in their favor. The wow. momentum now rolling. The rolling 7 on. C6 Seaman, they are the homeboys. They've come through the BYOC tournament being laid by Jerry. If they pick up this victory, they will be one to one and they will be tied with Team Acer. 
point. If uh, uh, Giants go down in here, they're going to be 0-3. and three. Their tournament is unfortunately over. They will not be advancing to the semi-finals. What that means is the very next game is going to be extremely important. The team that wins goes through. It's that simple. We're going to have a very clear-cut case of 3-0, and 2-1, 1-2, and 0-3. You know, very even 1-4 to four ranking. The game is not over yet. It is only a 4,000 gold lead. There are inhibitors still on the table. There are towers still uh, there to be taken. So the Giants are by no means out of it. And now with the Revenant's death cap completed, you've seen how much damage was going on to Ezreal from Exeter. You know, Cassidy was putting that Null Sphere down and it was chunking off huge, huge, huge portions of HP. If they can just get it onto the right person, focus a kill, and then get, you know, uh, uh, actually remove somebody from the fight, they might stand a chance to win. But with Chrono Shift and Guardian Angel, and a 605 Ezreal, 503 Zen, and a 006, one away from James Bond Blitzcrank, I really don't see it being a possibility. We do see Giants now shoving up this mid lane, but immediately there's the C6 Eamon revealing themselves in the bottom lane. They're going to face tank this bottom turret and immediately start working onto the in-hip turret. Jerry's first one tanking it. Ezreal's going to go past the creep. We need to see the Giants recording from this. They will not win this base trade. They're onto the inhibitor turret now, but the inhib is dead in this bottom lane, and there is a siege creep here for the C6 Eamon. They're onto the first Nexus turret. They're going to start this base trade. Are we going to see a recall? Here comes the Giants. They're coming in onto the Nexus turret, but the Nexus turret is going to fall before they arrive. The Nexus itself is exposed. Kestrel doing all the work he can. He's dropping down quickly but the Giants cannot save it in time and the 7 c 6 Demon do take the win! A base race to victory. It's been a long time since we've seen that. It was so, so incredibly done.